I was a reporter in Alpha City, a city full of superheroes and a universe full of miracles. I watched my city, told the stories that happened there, even watched the world end there. I watched realities appear and vanish over and over again until my world, my city, somehow returned. I don't know where I am, but I know I can still watch my city and still tell its stories. My name is Craig Allen, and this is Alpha City News. Alpha City glows in the night, buildings lit up by streetlights and the ever-changing kaleidoscope of headlights moving up and down her streets. City Hall shows flashes of light cast by a battle between Radiant and the Highlight Gang. The stadium casts its light to the sky as the capacity crowd cheers the Alpha City Crusaders to a win over the visiting team. An equally excited crowd sits in rapturous silence in the face of Mozart, as performed by the city's symphony orchestra. Above, a waxing crescent moon glimmers. I watch the city from a point just above the parapet of the Union Tower, but I find myself drawn down, down to street level, near the intersection of Absinthe Avenue and Cormorant Street to an empty point in the dimness between streetlights. Empty, but somehow full of possibility. As if the unoccupied space were waiting to be filled. The traveler appeared first faintly, like the afterimage of a bright light, slowly gaining substance and color. He appeared to be a young man, somewhere in his late twenties or early thirties, wearing loose-fitting gray clothes and soft shoes, with his hair cut into a queue and braided. He sat comfortably on a bench which had appeared with him, and which was made of dark metal and of unusual design. Next to him on the bench was something of gold and silver metal wound together in a design eye-watering in its complexity. The young man had been running a finger along the top of the glowing item and became fully real as soon as his contact with it ended. The item glimmered and seemed to twist sinuously in place. The young man took an unhurried moment to take in the street he found himself on and looked rather unsatisfied until his gaze fell on the area from which I had been observing. Wow! he said, his eyes widening slightly. A real ghosty. Are you a ghost? I can see through you, is why I ask. No offense meant. I'm not sure, I replied. I saw the universe end and begin again, and since then, no one has seemed to be able to see me. You are the first. Ah. You saw the universe end? Yes. And it just restarted? After a time when many different worlds took its place, yes. This world and my city returned almost exactly as I remembered. But not quite the same. No. I don't seem to exist here, except as an observer. Home, but not home. You and I have similar problems, I think. How so? This place, it looks like the city I came from, but the details are wrong. The street signs aren't right, let alone the names on them, and I don't recognize the skyline. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I've seen a few things which could be people flying. Yes, some people can fly here. Not many, comparatively. Yeah, I've been a couple places where that's true. But it means I'm definitely not home. No one flies without an airship where I come from. Oh, well. Where is home? I ask. I don't really know, he says, staring at the pavement. Wait, I mean, I know where home is. I just don't know how to get back there. I'm from a city called St. Cross, 
in Carolina. I got mixed up with this weird thing. Here, he gestured at the gold item. A guy, he'd been shot. He came out of an alley one night when I was headed home, and he gave me a bag and told me not to let them get it. And then he passed out. I got him to the hospital, and they did what they could, but he ended up dying. So I go home. I change my shirt because the one I was wearing had the guy's blood on it. And I eat something. Eventually I look in the bag and this thing's in it. It didn't look quite like this then. It was it was smaller. And there was more silver than gold in it. And I picked it up. I, I'm sorry. I'm going on about nothing. It's just... It's been a while since I just, you know, talked to someone. No. It's very interesting. I've not had anyone to speak with since Alpha City came back. I simply observe what happens. And I would like to hear more if you would like to tell me. Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't know how all this is going to end. Maybe it's a good idea that someone knows the full story. I'm, I'm Telford, by the way. I'd shake your hand, but you don't really seem to be there, right? My name is Craig Allen. It is a pleasure to meet you, Telford. Ah, two names. Cool. Telford paused a moment, gathering his thoughts. I spent a good long while just staring at the thing before I touched it. I'd never seen anything like it. No. Do you? No. It looks like nothing else I've seen prior to this. It does catch the eye, don't it? It's easy to get lost in, watching it move. There's a word I like. Reverie. Like when you get lost daydreaming and you don't notice time passing. I look too hard at this thing. I go into a reverie. It's kind of nice. And I see things in the reverie. That's how I figured out the story of the thing. I was staring at it. And I saw the guy who handed it to me. But younger and dressed old-timey. Like from the 1930s, I think. He's working in a lab that's half Frankenstein and half science fiction, and he's putting the thing together. He gets it together, and I see him doing a bunch of stuff, uh, tests, I guess. I think he'd somehow put the thing together without knowing really what it was. But finally, something works, where he runs his fingers over it in a certain, a certain way, and after that, it gets kind of sketchy, just showing flashes of stuff. The scientist in a big room with a guy on a throne threatening him, it seemed like, and the scientist running, and then a bunch of stuff I don't understand that ends with him handing the bag with the thing in it to me. But in the reverie, there's something about me in particular. That's why he gave it to me. I've watched the whole thing a bunch of times, and I, I couldn't tell you what it was, but the scientist guy, he seemed to be looking for me in particular. It might just be me trying to make sense of all of this, though. Perhaps he was looking for you. Or perhaps the object was. I get that feeling, yeah. The thing does seem to be smart in a way, but, like, it doesn't know my language, so what it's saying isn't clear. The first time, in the reverie, I thought about why somebody would want to give something like this to me. I mean... I dropped out of college. I was working at a diner washing dishes, bussing tables. I don't know anything about science. When I was thinking about it, none of the pictures I was seeing made any sense. I saw something like a tree and felt like I was moving real fast and the tree was dead and then alive and then dead again, back and forth. And then all that stuff went away and I saw this road with a car driving past. An old-style car, but looking like it was brand new. And that just kept repeating itself. Just kept seeing the car going past this certain part of road. The car must have been important. Yeah, I finally figured that out. Uh, that's when I finally touched the thing. And then there I was, by the road I'd seen. The car wasn't there yet, and all I could think was that I should stop the car... So I found a big stick by the side of the road, because the road cut through these woods, and I walked down the road a bit, and I sit on this bench. Here he tapped the bench he was sitting on. It was by a sign saying it was a bus stop, and the car comes along, and it passes me, and it runs over the stick, and pops a tire. 
It pulls over by the side of the road, and as soon as it stops, before a door can open or anything, everything goes away. I felt like I was inside a tornado. I mean, I'm holding on to the bench and the bag with the thing in it, trying not to get tossed off, and the wind blows for a long time. I can't see anything. When it stops, it's like someone flipped a switch. I mean, suddenly it's just gone. Me, the bench, and the bag with the thing in it, we're all back in the city. Well, we're back in a city, but not St. Cross. You found yourself here, in Alpha City. No, this all happened a while ago. Since then, I've just been trying to get home. I learned a lot about this thing. Well, a little bit. Telford reached out, but didn't quite touch the item's shifting surface. Mostly, it moves me on its own. But sometimes, I think I can direct it a bit, if I'm sit in a certain way and the right distance from it and such. I can pick it up and it'll fold itself so I can put it in my pocket. Sometimes in the places we land, it'll show me a picture like it did with the car on the road so I can do something, change something. Do the winds return when you do these things? Sometimes, but never like that first time. The times I've been able to see whatever happens after I change something... It seems like doing those things helped somebody. You know, it's like the thing might have a plan. It's possible. I've heard of powerful objects that have their own designs, their own will. Have you allowed anyone to inspect your device? Nope. I wouldn't know who to take it to. Telford shook his head with a rueful look on his face. I was about to say that I, if I gave it to someone and they broke it, I'd never get back home. But honestly, though, having this thing, it makes me feel special. I wasn't anything great before it came to me. I mean, I don't think I'm anything great right now, but well, I got this magic thing at least. I think I understand. If you change your mind, though, there are people here who might be able to help you understand it better. A sorceress who calls herself Presto, the greatest magic user of this age. A man called the Bright Man, for whom mysteries such as your object are intoxicating. Others as well. That's good to know. I don't think I'll be able to right now, though. Oh? Is the object about to move you? Yeah, there's a kind of itch in my head comes up before we move somewhere. Maybe we need to go change something. Maybe I was only here to talk to you. you know? Who knows? Life is strange right now. Yes, I agree. Life is quite strange at the moment. Anyway, thanks for letting me gab on. I don't get much chance to just hang out with anyone nowadays. First time I've ever met a ghost, too. And maybe we'll catch sight of each other again, yeah? Then you can tell me about the end of the world and what happened after that. I would like that. It has been a pleasure speaking with you, Telford. Back at you, Craig Allen. Ah, I wanted to ask if everyone around here has two names. Maybe next time. Telford, the bench, and the object had been fading as we spoke, leaving Alpha City behind. As with everyone, I observed, Telford had left an afterimage in time, but the line leading to his past seemed to come from nowhere, and the line to his future led somewhere I couldn't follow. I wished the traveler good luck one last time, before returning to the high vantage point I had been observing from prior to Telford's visit. Above the city, a waxing moon glitters. Both the concert hall and the stadium are now empty, as each crowd, satisfied with the spectacle they had been a part of, return home. City Hall is lit up by flashes of light from the police vehicles removing the highlight can, after their defeat by Radiant. Alpha City glows in the night, buildings lit up by street lights, and the ever-changing kaleidoscope of headlights moving up and down her streets. Thank you. 
This has been Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Written and produced by Carter Lee. You can download us at Libsyn, at rhymeswithgeek.com, on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Spreaker. If you wish to get in touch with us, please email us at alphacitynews at gmail.com. Thank you very much.